In this video tip, we will look at how to use rubrics in My Classes Canvas. Rubrics are used to communicate assessment expectations to users and can be used to align course assessments with learning outcomes. To access your course rubrics, first click on the rubrics link in your course menu. When rubrics is disabled, it is an area that you as the instructor can add rubrics to but not have students click on to see all rubrics in one place. When you go to rubrics, you will see all existing rubrics for the course, if any have been created. If not, this space may be empty, like it is now. From this page, you can edit existing rubrics or create new rubrics. To create a new rubric, click the Add Rubric button. You can add your title to your rubric, and then start filling out their criterion descriptions by clicking the Edit icon for each criterion. You can also add a longer description if you want to add more information to the criterion. If you are done, click Update Criterion. Next, you can add rating details for each criteria. By default, rubrics have two rating columns, full marks and no marks. If you would like to add more columns for rating criterion, click on the plus button in between ratings. As you may have noticed, a point value was auto-generated based on the highest point value possible for that criteria of five points. If you want to adjust the automated point system, you can manually change how much each rating gets. Points can be whole numbers or decimal numbers. In this example, two and a half points is directly in between five points for the maximum rating and zero points for no marks. You will be required to include a rating title. Then you can add a rating description to explain what earns the satisfactory rating. By default, the full marks and no marks ratings do not have descriptions. You can edit them to add more details. To add an additional criterion for grading, click the Add Criterion option and a drop-down menu will appear. You can duplicate a criterion if the wording is the same or similar or the points are the same, and you can just adjust the elements of the duplicated criterion to make it unique. You may decide to just add a new criterion instead of duplicating and updating criterion if you're using a different range of points. By default, rubric ratings are created as individual point values. If you want to create a point range instead, click the Range checkbox. Ranges allow you to assign a rating for a range of point options instead of just one specific point value. However, the criterion ranges will still function the same way as individual point ratings. For example, a range that includes a maximum of five points and a minimum of two and a half points, when selected, is assigned the full point value by default. You will have to manually change it to a different number between five and two and a half points. And we'll take a look at that when we've actually added the rubric to the assignment and are using it for grading. But first, let's create this rubric and look at where we can add it to specific assignments. If we refresh our rubrics page, we will see that we now have one rubric with three criteria and 13 points possible. Again, we can add a new rubric or edit this rubric. The total points are calculated by the maximum point ranges, so if I decided to change this maximum point range to 4 instead of 5, you will notice that the rating point ranges were automatically updated, but you can continue to make changes if needed. When you finish making changes, update your rubric, or you can delete a rubric if you no longer need it or you want to start over and create a new one. I have only created one rubric intended for discussions, but we'll actually look at three different assignment types and how you would add rubrics to those assignments. 
for assignments, you can have a regular assignment type, which will encompass your online assignment types, such as file uploads and text entry, as well as no submission or on paper assignments if they are submitting something in class or performing something via Zoom, or if you're using an external tool. Adding a rubric to this type of assignment is pretty straightforward. On the information overview page for that assignment, you will see the add rubric button. Click the button and you can either create a new rubric, giving it a title and adding criterion, or you can find a rubric that you've already created. Let's find that discussion rubric that we created. You will be able to locate and use rubrics from any course that you have a teacher role in. So I have scrolled down to find my Salisbury, Maryland course. When I click on that course, I find the discussion rubric that we just created. I can preview it to verify that this is the correct one. And if I scroll down, you'll notice there are three different scroll bars. I can select to use this rubric. In this example, I have attached an existing rubric, but I will need to click edit if I would like to use this rubric for grading. I can check the option to use this rubric for assignment grading or I can choose to hide the score total for the assessment results. If I'm not using it to assign the actual grade, but just to provide feedback, you can remove all points from the rubric if you intend to leave feedback without a point range scale. If you're using outcomes, you can choose not to include the outcome results in the Learning Mastery Gradebook, and you can choose to write freeform comments with or without points if you would like to forego using the ratings in general and just leave unique comments for each criteria. In this example, I will just use the rubric for assignment grading, but I'll keep the preset ratings with their point ranges and descriptions. The system is recognizing that I have created a rubric that is worth 12 points. However, when I created the assignment originally, I only made it out of 10 points. So I am now being notified that my rubric does not match the total amount of points. If I use the rubric for grading and someone gets full points, they will earn 120% instead of 100% for a maximum score. I can leave it different if I want to allow students to earn beyond the 100%. For the most part, your rubrics match the amount of points they can earn, so I'm going to select Change. And we'll see that the points for this assignment has now been updated to 12 to match the total possible points of the rubric. So now I have added a rubric for assignment grading to this assignment. However, it's a little bit different to add rubrics to discussions or quizzes. If we go to quizzes and select a quiz, to add a rubric to the quiz, click on the three dots icon that drops down for more options, click show rubric, and then click add rubric. Here you will see the familiar screen where you can create a rubric for this specific assignment, or you can search to find an existing rubric. Now when you come back and you look at the Show Rubric option, you will see which rubric has been assigned to this assignment. Additionally, when you go to Discussions, when you have a graded discussion, once again you can click the three dots to access the drop-down menu and click Add Rubric. And you will be taken to that familiar rubric tool where you can find or create a rubric. You can use the same rubric for multiple assignments but you will have to press edit and select the option to use the rubric for assignment grading every time you add the rubric to a new assignment. However, for quizzes, you will notice that a rubric attached to a quiz cannot be set for rubric grading because the total point values of the quiz questions determine the grade. For each assignment that you have attached a graded rubric to, you can use that rubric in the speed grader. When in SpeedGrader, you will click View Rubric. You can click and drag the rubric to resize how much retail space your grading rubric and the student submission has in SpeedGrader. Each box I select will tally up points, which is totaled at the bottom of the rubric. When I press Save, because I have used this rubric for assignment grading, a grade of 10 will instantly enter the grade book. However, you can add additional comments before you submit the score. Furthermore, you will notice that for each range, the maximum amount of points has automatically been set 
to the points earned for that criteria. However, if you are grading with a rubric that has a point range allotted, you can click on the box for that point range and change it to any grade within that range. If you enter a point value outside of the full marks point range, the system will automatically transition to select the criterion rating that matches the point value you have entered. Again, when you press save, the 9.5 out of 12 points that I have signed through the rubric will automatically go to the gradebook for the student. If I need to edit the score that I've added to the rubric, I can click View Rubric, I can go back and I can update the score, and I can save again to recalculate the points that the student earned. From updating the rubric, I have updated the grade in the gradebook. And finally, if I wanted to assign extra credit points, I can assign a point value higher than the allotted points, which will add extra credit to the assignment based on that criterion. Once again, that change I have made is reflected in the gradebook. If I have already used this rubric on a different assignment, and I want to make changes for it for a new assignment, when I click Edit Rubric, I will receive a warning that I cannot edit this rubric because it's being used in more than one place and the points have already been allotted based on this rubric. So I can say OK and a new rubric will be created based on a copy of the old rubric. For this rubric, instead of using it for assignment grading, I'll write freeform comments to assess the students and I'll put a different score where I can grade them on a scale of 1 to 5, but I can decide to reward a maximum of 12 points for the work while still giving feedback based on this five-point range. You'll note that if we go back to rubrics, that second rubric discussion was created because the first version of the rubric had already been used to grade a previous assignment. So now if we go to that assignment and view this rubric in SpeakRater, you'll see that you can leave freehand comments, and that you can even save and reuse for future comments, I can press save and the student will see my comments and the point values that they would have earned, but I can still use a different grade in the assignment area. In this way, you can use the rubric to provide some feedback without it punitively affecting the score. If you have more questions about how rubrics can be used, please feel free to reach out to an instructional designer at any time. Thank you for watching this video tip. For more information, please refer to the following guides.
If you have pre-existing defined outcomes for the course that you would like to attach to the rubric, you can click on Find Outcomes to search for and select the appropriate outcome that you would like to add. When doing so, you can select whether you want to use this criterion for scoring in the rubric or not. In this case, I will not include this criterion for the actual grade. This allows me to grade the assignment, but also designate a benchmark for how the student is meeting this critical thinking outcome. If you would like to remove a criterion, you can just click the delete button, or again, you can delete the entire rubric. And you can continue to update and change criterion and outcomes as needed.